Hey, my name is Tim White and I help people achieve their natural health and strength. For that I've created the Metabolic Masterclass which gets you from zero to metabolic health in eight weeks. If you're interested in that, check out the links below. But today I'm gonna share with you why I am not consuming any broccoli sprouts despite people like Dr. Rhonda Patrick having propagated broccoli sprouts as a superfood because it activates the NRF2 pathway in the body, which is the chief antioxidant pathway. Okay, and I'm gonna share today in this video. While this is true, this is not really a good thing and why you should watch out when consuming sprouts and why probably you shouldn't do it. Okay, so stick around. So first of all, we have to clear up what is sulforaphane and what are glucosinolates, okay? Because these are the compounds, the biochemistry, yeah, um, which are behind the NRF2 pathway activation, which are then seem to be the great thing about broccoli sprouts, okay? Because it has huge amount of these chemicals in them. Glucosinolates are produced by mustard plants and all their following plants, such as kale and broccoli, stick with me as a defense mechanism against being eaten. Again, we are at that theory, how plants can defend themselves, okay? The sprout of a plant is basically the baby plant, right? The, it just started to live. Now, think about it. How will the plant defend itself from being eaten in that baby stage? It can't run away, right? It can't howl at you or something like that. No, instead it has a booby trap installed, okay? Which should teach you not to eat it. Once you've eaten it once, you get a negative effect, so you won't eat it twice. This is how it works. And this is falsely, falsely claimed to be a health benefit for us by some uh, health experts. So the predominant glucosinolate in broccoli sprouts is sulforaphane, okay? And sulforaphane is highly reactive, oxidatively reactive, okay? Is that something positive? Not really. In fact, sulforaphane does not exist in any other form of plant because it is so oxidatively reactive. It is so reactive that its full force is only activated like a booby trap once you chew the sprout and you break down the cell walls where an enzyme is released to fully activate its effects. The plant stores sulforaphane as a precursor molecule. Then as you consume the sprout, you eat it, you break down the cell walls. Yeah, this precursor combines with an enzyme and then sulforaphane is created. Again, think about the booby trap analogy. You need to step on the mine in order to activate it. Now, what happens when you consume sulforaphane and it enters your body is that your body um, recognizes its highly oxidative capacity and thus activates the NRF2 pathway as a oxidative defense mechanism. And this is key here, it's a defense mechanism. This in turn boosts glutathione, the body's chief antioxidant. Now think about that, your body is acting against an external stressor, okay, with an internal hormetic antioxidant response through glutathione and the NRF2 pathway. Is it through the molecule? Sulforaphane, yes, but is it exclusively because sulforaphane has some kind of unique um, capacity? No, it is just one type of stressor, one type of oxidative stress on the system, which activates your body's internal defense mechanism. Well, this can be done otherwise. This can be done, for example, through heat exposure, through cold exposure, yeah, through stress, through exercise, right? So think about it. Is it worth the hormetic response, which you can get through other means as well, is it worth it? Consuming a highly oxidative plant chemical, which is originally meant to help the plant defend itself from being eaten. Then logically, why would you consume that plant, that sprout, why? If the sprout is evolutionary designed over thousands of years, to come up with something, that booby trap of sulforaphane production, to keep you from eating it. Why would you eat it? So this alone should make it clear that sulforaphane is not a prime health food and you should not bath in broccoli sprouts. Instead, in my opinion is you should avoid broccoli sprouts because we are not meant to eat sprouting plants, yeah, because they don't want that. And thus they have plant chemicals to defend themselves from predators. 
Also, sulforaphane is found to compete with iodine on the thyroid level, actively contributing to hyperthyroidism, okay? And when you've watched my stuff for long, you know that the thyroid is a chief component in your metabolic health, all right? So if your thyroid is not pumping out enough hormones, T3, T4, thyroid hormones, in order to push your metabolism, your metabolic rate, to signal your body that there's an abundant energy state and that we can um, engage with all the repair and growth processes in the body, when this is not happening, well, you, you slump into a low metabolic state. Yeah, where you are tired, you have low energy, you have low, no motivation, your body is conserving energy and all these kind of things are promoted yeah, by sulforaphane. All right, with that, I'm signing off for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please click the like button for me, subscribe so you never ever miss another episode. Again, I'm releasing videos frequently all around metabolic health and nutrition yeah, and biohacking and getting yourself naturally strong and healthy. And if you really want to supercharge that process, I've created the Metabolic Masterclass, which is an eight-week course which gets you from zero to metabolic health with never publicly shared information um, worksheets, cheat sheets, video lectures, it's all there for you, yeah? And I'm also teaching principles instead of just strategies, okay? And these principles will carry you for your life and yeah, it's, it's a great program, I'm really proud of it. So check that out, link is in the description below and then I hope to see you in the next episode. Until then.